Here we go. All right. So welcome everybody oh, to oh. the healthcare subcommittee oh. meeting for the Casey yeah. Mayor's Commission on Reparations. Um, so this is our March meeting. Um, so I guess we do we need to do a, a roll call? I will do roll call. If you're here, <laughs> say here. If you're not, don't say a word. <laughs> Commissioner Jones. <laughs> Present. Um, Commissioner Hartsfield. Commissioner King. Here. Commissioner Tahid. And Commissioner Ellis. Okay, I've got both of you guys present. And I'm going to jump off screen here, but I'll still okay. be here. Okay. All right, so one of the things is a follow-up item, um, Commissioner King, from our previous um, meetings, we discussed putting together a speaker list, so speakers that we would like to come to our subcommittee um, meetings. Um, in the past, what we've done, oh, there's someone else joining. In the past, what we've done is um, invited, we've only had one speaker so far, but took about half the meeting for the speaker. Um, hello. Hi, Dennis, how are you? Good, thank you. Sorry to be late. No problem. No problem. So we're just on the first agenda item here um, discussing our, our speaker list. And I was just explaining to Commissioner King that we've discussed different speakers that we'd want to bring in. So I put together a list, um, an Excel file list um, with the contact information that I had for some of the speakers on the, the list um, and file that in our Teams folder. So, you know, there's now a Teams for the, the commission, um, if you've been able to, to log on to that. Um, and then there's a speakers list on the Teams um, folder that, that Eric has put together. Um, so you can take a look at that list. And if you wanna add people to it, um, you know, please go ahead and add people to is I don't think it's totally comprehensive of everyone that we've discussed because um, I didn't have contact information for, for everyone. So if there are people that you think that should be added, please add them to that list. Um, and then the plan is for Eric to help us reach out to speakers and get kind of a rolling cadence of speakers for every meeting. So I've drafted some some language where he can send out just kind of a standard email to everyone explaining, you know, who we are, what what type of presentation that we want, um, how long that there'll be a and a so he can just plug in the, the speaker information and and send that out to people. And so the goal is to, to have kind of a, a set agenda over the next six months, at least of different speakers that will be coming to our um to our, our monthly um, meeting. So um, just just FYI, please take a look at that and let me know if you have any questions. Yep. I just had a question on that. Are there any parameters? Like, is it a set amount of time? Is there certain parts of, I know I'm new, so maybe you all have gone over that. Is it certain medical topics? No, like? um, and let me see if I can pull up the email. I don't have it here. I can maybe pull it up on my phone, the email that I, crafted I think I put in the email 30 to 45 minutes like 30 minutes with some time for for question and answer um mm -hmm. is and then let me see if I can find the, the email that's okay here. I just want to get an idea as I'm thinking about yeah I made you know, it who, kind who, of general you know that that we're interested in topics relevant to health care um topics to understand policies and practices um, that are within the Kansas City um, government that may have impacted health care for Black Kansas Cityans, um, and then kind of their ideas for what they think um, the harms may be, as well as what type of reparations um, should be recommended to address those harms. So I'm assuming that it would probably be like the top four, top five um, health issues in the Black community. Um, part yeah, I don't think it has to be specific to any one topic because, you know, some people may have different expertise that come, you know, for example, we invited one of the people on the list focuses more on maternal health. So okay. their discussion may just be around, you know, these mm -hmm. are the, the harms that I think have occurred related to maternal health in the Black community. This is how maybe the 
the city or the government help to perpetuate these harms. Mm -hmm. And these are the the things that we recommend as reparations um, okay. to correct those. And so the goal is to have a speaker each meeting for 30 minutes and then the meeting. Um, yeah. After that, okay. I hear I have the invitation here if you want me to with the language that I came up with um, just says I'm ready to invite you as a representative from blank to join the Casey Reparations Commission Healthcare subcommittee meeting on whatever day 4 to 5 p.m. Um, central time via zoom we would like to hear from individuals, interest groups, organizations to share their insight into inequities experienced by Black citizens in Kansas City and experiences broadly within the U.S. that may be relevant to the work of the KC Mayor's Reparations Commission. We would also like to hear your thoughts on what types of reparations should be considered by the commission in the specific area of health care. And please let us know if, if you are representative will be available to speak with us and engage in a Q&A with the group. So I didn't put a specific time mm -hmm. here. So okay. we can yeah, follow up. So we can just send it out to our network and then there to get back with us, to get with you on which which month. Okay. Yeah, well, so my plan was if if you have someone that you would want to want us to reach out to, just add their name to the um the spreadsheet in the Teams oh. folder. Okay. And then Eric was going to help us with reaching out to people. Got it. That or if there's sense. someone, but if there's someone you have a personal connection with, then, mm -hmm. you know, please go ahead and reach out to them. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on that? And then the next item um, that actually was left off of our agenda, but kind of aligned, so that is our um, listening session. Um, so we've discussed having a listening session. Um, we had discussed having it in the spring, but it's already the spring. Um, but we wanted to <laughs> we wanted to have a listening session um, where Kevin Wilmot would be the the premier. Um, speaker. So um, I don't know if you're familiar with Kevin Wilmot. Okay, so you are. Dion, are you familiar with Kevin Wilmot at all? So he um, he's a filmmaker. Like he's mm -hmm. done a lot of like big Hollywood films now, but he's also a professor at KU. Um, but he did a, a documentary on the history of Black health care in Kansas City mm -hmm. um, called um, From Separate to Equal that gives the history of Truman Medical Center, Hospital Number no. 2, um, Wheatley, Provident. Um, and so I was able to have a phone call with him back in the fall, actually. Um, um, Commissioner Barnes and I kind of discussed the, the documentary and some of the research that, that he'd done to develop the documentary. Um, and then also asked him, would he participate in our listening session? on healthcare once we um, um, were ready to, to plan for that. So um, he agreed then um, verbally, but I just recently reached out to him again via email to formally invite him and to get his availability. Um, Cause given his schedule, I think we'd have to, we'll have to work around his schedule. Um, so he'll be our, our central speaker. Um, and then so the the plan that we've discussed within the subcommittee is having about a um, we would we would have a viewing of the documentary. So the documentary is about 60 minutes. And then afterward, he would say have a few words, maybe 15 or 20 minutes kind of discussing some of the research and everything that went into the documentary. And then we'd also discuss having maybe a panel discussion of different healthcare you know, representatives or, or um, stakeholders um, having a panel um, discussing kind of the community um, voice and may, maybe a very brief period for just open comment um, for the audience. So we're looking at about a two, two and a half hour um, um, listening session, I think, um, with the with the viewing. Um, so I'd like to start um, planning for that now that we have a 
we have a document to help guide us in how we plan for our listening session. So Eric was going to put that also into the Teams um, folder for us to take a look at. But the main things, I think, um, besides nailing down that the speaker is thinking about the venue, where could we have this? Because um, we'll need some place with, you know, a video capability to play the, the documentary. Um, as well as, um, you know, if, if we have a panel, who might we want to have on our panel? Um, and then marketing, the marketing aspects of it, because um, I'd want a pretty, you know, a good audience with the speaker that we're going to have. Um, and of course, we want really great community feedback. So um, that's kind of the update on that. I'm excited about that. I know he's he, he did a Black KKK. Uh, movie and then he uh, I just went to an event where he's doing uh, Mr. Alvin Brooks uh, life movie oh wow yeah I know. yeah yeah and, you know, that should be coming out in a couple of months they've been working on it and, oh wow okay yeah so he'll probably be busy so I, I just asked him to let us know when he's available um, did you consider the uh, place where we have the buy black uh, expo and they show the film with Robin uh, Simmons and is that too big? Or? That's what I was thinking about when we went there but you know the audio was not good when we listened yeah. to the film mm -hmm. and I don't know if it was you know I don't I don't know if it's always that way but the the audio was not very good but I think the location would be really great. Where was this? Um where the location when um Robin was it Robin Simmons? Yeah, Robin Simmons. I think it was Bruce R. Was it Bruce R. Watkins? Yeah, Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center. I thought well the session that I um sat in, I thought the video was pretty good. Really? So I was in the morning session. I was in the afternoon. So maybe there was just an issue. So the audio was good when you sat in on it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be a, a good location. So I'll send out an, another email to the group. Um, I know our group is small, but it'd be good if we could get volunteers to help, you know, some help find a location and some help think about the panel discussion to give ideas of who we could invite for the panel discussion and and help reach out to those folks. So I'll send a follow-up email on that. I think the other place that we mentioned was the health department. Do they have a big auditorium? They do. Given that it's a health thing, and yeah. I don't know if we'd have to pay. Um, let me check on that. Okay. I just did a presentation at uh, KU uh, Medical Medical Center for the upcoming African American Health Center. Mm -hmm. It was a nice. Uh, it was more intimate. They had like a long conference table, but they had really nice IT set up and videos all over the room. Um, I don't know if that could be something if we did end up having a smaller crowd. Um, that might be the right intimate setting for them. Yeah, I'm hoping this will draw a, a pretty large crowd. I'm hoping, you know, given um again the the film and and um Kevin Wilmot's, you know, name recognition. I'm hoping we'll have a, a larger crowd. And hopefully, you know, we can get marketing out way ahead of time so that um, you know, plenty of people will know about it and get it disseminated out through a lot of different networks. Okay. Um, and then any any questions, comments on that? And so we're we're thinking that um this particular event is going to be what in May or June timeframe? I, I would probably say May at the earliest given that it's already, you know, mid-March, um, 
it may be even, you know, later into the summer, um, you know, July or so. Um, I just, I asked uh, Mr. Wilmot to give me dates over the next three months um, when he'd be available. And we talked about doing a weekday um, in the evening because we felt like people might participate more on a weekday versus a weekend. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but that's what that's what we had discussed previously that we would try a weekday in the evening. Okay. Okay, so the next thing um, was our committee um, mission and goals and harm statement. So I know Commissioner King, you um, helped put together a session this past week that I wasn't able to attend that helped inform um, the commission on how to put to put together harm statements. So I was just going to bring up if I'm able to share. Am I able to share my screen? Yes. Um, so, so our subcommittee has a running um, PowerPoint slide. You guys can see that. Um, where we have started to put together in each meeting or most meetings, we kind of review our purpose, our priorities, objectives, areas of focus and actions. Um, and then starting to just list out harms as we identify them within our discussion, but it's also meant to be a running list as speakers come in. We can document here kind of some of the harms that they that they call out, um, and then even some of the recommendations that um, they may make in, in their presentation. So this is kind of how we've done it so far. Um, and this is based on a framework from another um, reparations commission. I can't remember what city it was, but it was an example that Mickey Dean shared. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we've kind of have framed it um, so far. But just wanted to give you um, some time, um, Commissioner King, to talk about kind of what was learned this past week in the session and kind of how it might inform what we what we're doing here. Yeah, thank you. Um how much I know you said you're going to be cutting it short. So how much time did you want me to um so okay. after this we just we have new business that's open comment. So I would say 10 minutes oh. if that uh, if It'll be yeah. I just want to make sure there's two okay. minutes. Okay. Um so yeah I did get an opportunity to put together um, it was like a private office hours with the National Black uh, Cultural Information. Um, they are a national organization that I've started to follow. I've just been impressed with how this young lady, her name, her name is Jessica. Um, she goes by JAM, J-A-M, because those are her initials. And so um, she has presented a couple of times that I've had the opportunity to sit in um, an informative session called Communicating Reparations. And the reason I keep presenting on it and meeting with her because I think she has some substantive things and she's made it very simple. And she's taken uh, and gleaned a lot of information from different reparations reports and has put it into this, um, to this presentation. So what I did is I just, I don't wanna repeat, but it looks like we've got a good start on some things. I know some other committees don't, so this is, is really good. But uh, so perhaps it's probably best that I just kind of give you the top level highlights on some wording that the, the subcommittee heads were like, this is really good and it's something that we had thought about. So our first question was about, um, well, one of my questions was, where do you start? Because I think a lot of times our, uh, we start with slavery and the counter narrative to that is, you guys are not slaves. Your mama was not slaves. Your grandma wasn't slaves. Um, and we're not masters and slave owners. So they kind of, put it in a space where uh, that was a long time ago, so it's not relevant. And so what we talked about is how it, not our harm statement has to include three um, time periods. Yes, slavery, yes, Jim Crow, and yes, modern systemic um, racism. However, my question was, does our harm statement have to start back with slavery? 
because I'm thinking if we start with a present tone where we're showing and identifying and quantifying the present harm, then we can show historically how this is now, it is relevant, it is recent, it is still harming, and yet these are historical things that have led up to where we are now, and it's still ongoing. So what uh, Jessica had talked about is, and I love this term is, we're just readdressing the injuries in our harm statement. So um, that's a term that they talked about. And the harm statement should really include things like um, she said words like, um, this is what we are owed instead of what we need. That was a big thing for me um, because I think that just presents more of a, less mm -hmm. of a begging for money or a check, which I think is, is what the counter narrative usually tries to spin it. But this is what we're owed because there was some unjust enrichment that you know the white community benefited from that we didn't. And so... Um, that was talking about how do we present that present tone um, in a way that's impactful and where people can't counter it as if it's something way in the past that's not relevant. Um, so those three, again, those three areas are chattel slavery, Jim Crow, and modern systemic racism. Then we talked about um, how do we bolster the narrative? And she gave a lot of examples, like uh, you talked about Commissioner Jones, uh, just the maternity piece, um, the maternity rates, and um, I don't know all the terms. So this is a great way for me to learn a lot with all of the healthcare issues. Uh, but to really being specific, not too much where you give a lot of details, but just some of, again, the present harm okay. that really kind of quantifies it. Um, I asked about, does the harm statement also need to have qualifiers? Should it be numbers? All that. She said, no, that's for the the other part, but your harm statement is really like the thesis piece, which I understood okay. to be, but I just you know wanted to ask those questions to make sure it's being more impactful. Um, let's see what else. The other thing is that she said that she thinks there's value in us um, adding a few state a few statements in the about this is not taken away from white people, but again, readdressing current harms. Um and uh, addressing unjust enrichment. Um, and then the other thing is that we're able to clearly state, she says she, she recommends that we stay away from initially talking about cash payment. Okay. And the reason is I, I'm trying to like Y'all. in our harm statement or just overall or? In our harm statement. Okay. Again, harm statement. Okay. And yeah, I thought that made sense too. But I do think she, uh, the reason she mentioned that is because a lot of commissions would start off with that. And then that gave mm -hmm. that gave the news and the media outlets uh, the ability to say, see, they're wanting all this money and where it's going to come from. And it's taken away from us as a community and it's not necessary. And so she was saying, let that not be the first message, because she's seen time and time again that commissions, um, you know, their their whole platform sort of be deemed that because uh, the media was able to spin it, where now it's focusing on just a check, just a paycheck. Um, and that's where she also kind of talked about it's owed instead of needed. So I really appreciated those things. Um I don't want to repeat the logistic things that I had gone over in January, and it looks like you have most of that in what you just showed us in your presentation, but I'm happy to um, to give you that presentation again if there's some other things that you think might be helpful and talk you through that because I sat in on it twice now, and each time I learned something uh, okay. different. Okay. Then the last thing uh, I asked about was, <clears throat> um, she said that, you know, after we've done the harm statement, what's been most impactful again is like our listening sessions, but really um, oh. strong testimonies and just stories. Um, she talked about how City Citibank did a story on how racial discrimination has cost the nation trillions of dollars, and I think that's when we were talking about just how do you uh, quantify the harm. Um, 
She talked about interconnections and separate harm. And at first I had conceptually, I couldn't understand, but then when she gave examples like in early childhood education, we may lack certain resources. We may, there's maybe certain things that impede uh, as a community, our education, and then we grow. And then now it kind of is connected to the prison system because mm -hmm. you know, perhaps our black boy gets in trouble at school and they escalate how they respond. Now he's on a plan. Now that's a plan to prison. And so that's how she was saying, also, it's good for you to have the interconnectedness even yeah. though we have separate harm statements. So each one of our harm statements should also have something in there. And I'm not sure if that necessarily needs to be in the harm statement, but I do think it'll kind of put it in a nice package if we're able to show how they're all connected, even though they are separate harms. So that was impactful uh, to me. Yeah, I think some type of, I don't know if we, you know, at some point would it, engage like a graphic designer or someone like that I think like a figure like a picture would really like show what? that of like how all of the different harms overlap one another where you know in the school you know education component like you mentioned if you you know or don't have access to an ad adequate ed education then that may lead you to be at a social at a certain socioeconomic background, which also impacts your health, which, you know, mm -hmm. like for, yeah. for me, like visually, like I can, I can I probably it. get it more in a picture. Yeah. I love that. Um, Infograph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that would be very uh, powerful. Then the other thing I think is worth us mentioning and thinking about is who was our audience as we're writing this harm statement? You know, is it something, do we write it? you know, to present to the council? Do we write it to the community? Um, because that language certainly may be different. So that was a something I don't think we clarified because- So you're saying, saying who exactly is the audience? Yeah, who is the audience for our harm statements and for our, you know, full plan and proposal? So that's probably something as a commission we need to, to think yeah. about. The direction of how we write that is very important. Um, she did give two or three resources that I've been slowly reading through, uh, which is the California reparations. I've heard several uh, leaders in the reparations movement talk about how that's a good one that a lot of them use as a template. And so they have a good harm statement that we can kind of pull some things from and, and help us with that. And then of course the Eviston um, harm statement that they have for their housing reparations. Um, I think, let's see, harm based remedies. Oh, the other thing that I, this is the first time I had heard about it, we talked about harm based remedies versus race based remedies. And that's what she really mm -hmm. kind of, the umbrella topic was comprehensive reparations. And um, when we really focus on the harm based, it helps us to contend with the counter narrative that, oh, this is race-based. And you know, a lot of the organizations that are calling it illegal to have the focus on race and having some sort of reparations because of your race type of thing. So she said, if you really focus it more on the harm caused and then how it's centered in on a certain community as opposed to the race-based argument. So, I can get clarity on that. I don't know if you all had heard that before, but um, no. But that's a. I think that's a good point. Um, yeah, it'd be good to see examples. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because there are a lot of uh, being a lot of uh, organizations that are saying it's just illegal, uh, and also the ancestry based piece. We have to be careful of that. Uh, ancestry based can also mm -hmm. be illegal. Uh, so. Um, I think for the most part, that was what I wanted to share today, but it was it was very insightful. She is very um, uh, giving with her time. So if anybody across the nation wants to sit with her for an hour during her office hours, she always has a link that you just get on and you can ask her questions and she'll have oh, a wow. session with you. So I wanted to use that time for a, a session just for our our folks and uh, we have had a very good turnout and I think people were able to ask questions specifically to their harm statement. So um, my understanding yeah. that's, that's part one as we're starting to uh, write a proposal. 
Okay. Yeah, that's that's right. And it's um the National Black Cultural Information. Yes. Okay. So I'm adding a slide to our kind of running slides here with um this information. Do you think um it'll be worth inviting her to a subcommittee meeting? Like maybe once we get further along and have some more harms listed or um it, I think it's always helpful. It may be redundant for the other um you talking about just for this? Yeah, just for our like once we, you know, continue to collect information from our, our different speakers and have a maybe a more running list of harms and we really start to craft an actual harm statement. Because what we have now is is purpose, priorities, objectives, areas of focus and actions. Then we start to just list out some harms, but we don't have a we haven't really actually started on a statement. Okay. So once we start, you know, trying to write a statement, maybe having her the whole uh, notion of uh, starting in the present as opposed to starting as in the slavery uh, piece. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna copy these resources you put here also to our slides. Okay. We have a resources slide where I'm trying to keep up with all of this. Well, if you find a good way to do all of that, let me know. I've been just putting it in a folder, but it's a lot of resources we get, which is good. But those are the ones that she had mentioned. So we'll okay. that too. Okay. Thank you. That was that was great. Okay. Any other questions, comments about that? So I think that we're probably the end of our agenda, um, unless there's some additional new business that anyone has to bring up. I don't know if this is new business, uh, but feeling feeling guilty, I accepted some assignments before Christmas, and it has fallen off my my plate. And I like to make good on those. If you're seemingly you're keeping a running tally on that, if you would just send that to me, what my assignments are, I I would like to <laughs> fulfill. Okay, that. okay, yes, I will. I don't know if I have it noted. I may have to look back in my notes, um, but I'll send you an email. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if we don't have anything else, um, Eric, is there anyone on for um, public comments or questions? Okay, we have three people in the audience. Um, at this time, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and I will make it so that you are able to speak uh, and ask your cop question or give a comment. No one's got their hand up. Okay. Well, we said we we're going to end at 440, so I think we're on time. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get out. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. I will, we will see you all soon. Thank you, guys. I'll meeting adjourned at 440. Have a okay. Good Have a good evening. Bye-bye.